Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Resilient Advisor. This episode is part of our ETF story series where I interview thought leaders and portfolio managers in the ETF industry, and we learn industry interesting stories about products that they are producing. Every ETF has a story, and some of them deserve to be told. ETF Stories from Resilient Advisor brings you some of the most interesting stories from the world of ETFs. Learn more by visiting ETFStories.com. Joining me today are Chris Versace and Lenore Hawkins of Tomatica Research, and they are the intellectual property behind the Tomatica Beta Cleaner Living Index, which powers the newly launched Amplify Cleaner Living ETF, symbol DTOX. Guys, thanks for coming on ETF Stories. Uh, happy to do it, Jay. Thanks right. for having us. Listen, you guys have been regulars on the show. I'm excited that you have uh, some IP behind a US-based ETF. Let, let's start at a high level. What is this cleaner living stuff all about? So, Jay, you know, when we talk about thematics, we always look at that intersection, that sweet spot of shifting uh, landscapes between economics, demographics, psychographics, technology, and some other things. And, and this one in particular focuses on the changing psychographic uh, pattern of consumers. And what consumers are doing increasingly, Jay, is they're looking for products that are, let's say, better for them. What do we mean by that? Food that's natural, organic, low sugar, non-GMO. They want products that they can put on their bodies that don't have uh, harmful ingredients or additives. They're also looking for products that they can put in their homes and in the environment. And that could either be at work or it could be in the cars that they drive. And as, as we talk about this, we'll give some uh, more concrete examples, not only as to what examples of cleaner living are, but importantly, Jay, the why behind why this is happening. Well, so one question investors and really advisors that are building portfolios always have is like, why now? Why is now the time for cleaner living? It's a great question. And there's a couple of things. So before the pandemic, we were already seeing consumers moving in this direction. For example, 10 years ago, if you went to the grocery store, you weren't going to see a whole lot of dairy alternatives. <laughs> you go now and there's more dairy alternatives than there are actual dairy products in the section that used to be the dairy products, right? You've got almond milk and oat milk and coconut milk. I mean, the, 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 the things and, they think, rice milk, the things they can make milk out of is and, pretty and amazing. Every, and every permutation between those. And every permutation <laughs> between, right? You go over to like pasta, it used to just be pasta. Well, now you've got the gluten-free pasta. You've got chickpea pasta. You've got a million different varieties. And more and more, we're seeing both what you put into your body, food options, non-GMO. And you're seeing also with the things that you put on your body, for example, Sephora has their clean products where they certify that these products are free of chemicals that are deemed to be not so good. So we care about what's going in and we get what's going out. And we're seeing that really accelerating. But what happened was the pandemic. And that really emphasized the need for cleaner, healthier, really put the focus on people's health in a way that it just really hadn't been before. When we saw what the comorbidities were, you know, with obesity and diabetes, that if you had those, if you weren't sleeping well, things that just generally not being healthy, either physically or mentally, was a real detriment during the pandemic. And that's really stuck. And then on top of that, when you look at the economy, there's really three main components to an economy. There's the consumer, there's the corporate side, and then there's the, the government side. So those three is that's basically it when you want to talk about what makes an economy. And right now we're seeing all three of those pushing in the same direction. We're seeing, like we said, the demand from the consumer of wanting more and more products for your body inside and out, for your home, for your office place, just for the planet in general that are cleaner, healthier. And we're seeing companies shifting in that direction, even to the point where with the pandemic subsiding, we're hearing companies talk about, you know, maybe we're going to rethink corporate travel, not so much because of the bottom line, although that doesn't get hurt by cutting corporate travel, but because they're concerned with their overall carbon footprint. That's new. We're seeing companies all over the place look at part of their job is not just to shareholders, but their job is also to the environment as a whole. And we're also seeing a huge push from the government. Uh, in Europe, you're seeing 
more and more stringent regulations. And even in the US, we just had an act passed that was uh, reducing, putting a lot of focus on the kinds of potentially harmful ingredients that have been in makeup that have been able to kind of get through that they're, they're cutting that out and putting restrictions on that. So we're seeing all three components moving in the same direction that really emphasizes that this is something that's got some serious tailwinds behind it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the size of the consumer and consumer spending as an economic driver is simply massive. Um, Lenore, I think when we were you know, preparing to talk to Jay, you, you were saying that the G20 uh, countries, they, they spend something like $22 trillion. Yeah. Consumer spending is $22 trillion. So not a, not a small market. <laughs> right. Right. And, and, you know, again, when we look across this, it's very easy to talk about food, kind of like what, what some of the examples Lenora just gave, because you walk down the grocery aisle and more and more shelf space is being geared to this. But when you think of other things, like, uh, for example, I, I just did some, some painting in my office and I was trying to track down some low VOC paints. You know, we're seeing more um, beauty products or personal care products have the paraben free. Um, so companies like Native, Dr. Squatch, Lenore, you mentioned Sephora's, Cody, which is a um, health and beauty product, sorry, beauty products company that's really transforming itself is really leaning into this theme. But then again, Sherwin-Williams, Benjamin Moore, uh, sustainable packaging is becoming big. And, and, and there's also the impact on the environment. So we're starting to see changes in packaging. We're starting to see um, more recycling as well. And even what's, what's interesting is consumers have shifted from this being kind of a, a, a nice to have, or I'm interested in it, to more of a, I pick this over other things. A recent McKinsey survey of about 7,500 people across six different countries looking at, at this found that between, depending on the country, 21 to 41% of consumers around the world, when choosing a supplement, would choose something that's more natural over something that's more effective. So there they would actually say, okay, I'll take less effective, but I want more natural ingredients. And when asking about skincare, again, it was somewhere between 21% to 36% globally, depending on the country, would choose a skincare product that was more natural versus more effective. So this is, it's not only becoming something that I care about, it's I care about this more than other things. Yeah, and it's, it's not just data from McKinsey, which is a great source, but the more we look around, there's more data supporting this. There's a report called Meet the 2020 Consumers Driving Change, and believe it or not, 77% of those surveyed wanted clean products, 73% um, wanted products that use organic ingredients, 72% wanted those that support recycling, 72% wanted uh, authenticity of products. And again, 72% said they want products that are sustainable and or environmentally responsible. And you know, the other thing that's really interesting about this, Jay, you would think perhaps that oh, this, this is the millennials, but it's not. It's absolutely not. When we look across all the demographic, excuse me, the demographic groups, whether it's Gen Z, millennials, Gen X, or even the boomers, they're all pushing for this. And it's, you know, like Lenore mentioned a few minutes ago, people are becoming increasingly aware of their of health and the environment in those issues. So I don't know if you know this, Jay, uh, but about 40% uh, of Americans are living with diabetes or pre-diabetes. Okay, that's mm -hmm. a huge number. Uh, the European Union has banned about 1,300 chemicals and cosmetics. Uh, that's everything from makeup, lotions, hair dyes, deodorant, nail polish, shaving cream, and other beauty products. Uh, compared to about, uh, I think it's only a hundred. What is it? I think it's only 11 in the U.S. Lenore, which is insane when you think about that. And when you think about those two things, the the diabetes and the chemicals and cosmetics, back to the why now. This pandemic really highlighted the dangers that these pose. Diabetes was one of the, the biggest comorbidities for COVID. We're really highlighting, you know, put, put COVID aside, but that really highlighted that when you have diabetes, your immune system is compromised. Right. These chemicals that they're, they're banning in cosmetics, again, that's the pandemic kind of highlighted that these chemicals, they excite the immune system. Right? These are things that our bodies are not real excited about having. Getting that immune system to be hyperreactive, not good 
for dealing with just what life may bring at you. So for why now, one of the biggest pushes has been that the world has just gone through a shared health crisis that really brought the need to day-to-day focus on keeping your body healthy, brought that to the forefront in a way that really has never happened before, not in the modern era. Right, right. Absolutely true. And then, uh, you know, alongside with that, people are also examining the transportation sector about, you know, and I, I, this was news to me when we were doing our homework, about half of all California's carbon pollution, uh, 80% of smog forming pollution and 95% of toxic diesel emissions is all due to the transportation sector. So you can understand why the whole- Come check out the five freeway. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. But you- The parking lot. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So, so you can understand why there's a huge push for EVs and not just, you know, electric cars, but electric scooters, electric, electric buses, electric trucks, and all, all of that is captured in one of our sub themes. But I, I think when you step back, Jay, you, you take everything that we just talked about, and you have to say that there's a number of tailwinds that are supporting this, this push into cleaner living as an investment strategy and powering this index. And, and perhaps one of the greatest you know, proof points for us is when companies start acquiring other companies to expand their product line into this area, they bring new products out, or when new companies go public. So, you know, recently we both had um, Oatly and The Honest Company go public, and they're just right in the sweet spot of this theme. And I I expect we're going to see a lot more of this activity, um, as well as the fact that, you know, when thematic investing is done right, it almost reads like it's ripped from the headlines. Uh, Mm -hmm. And we, of course, use that to power our thematic signals that we, our thematic reads and thematic signals that we put out every week. Listen, that, that is a really data rich story that's very easy to buy into. Okay, did you, gotta, did, I'm sorry. Did you expect anything else? No, not at all. <laughs> and it, it was very data dorks over here. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, guys, I, we've talked about this individually on the shows we've done in the past. And I think I'm a great example of some of this change. So I'm, mm. you know, I'm in yeah. my mid 40s. I'm not exactly somebody 20 years ago, you would have said, hey, that's somebody that would consider uh, an electronic vehicle or eating yeah. clean and healthy. And my kids for the past 12, 13 years, they basically eat all organic. You know, we yeah. do pay attention to things that are going in our body, on our body. So is our peer group. And mm-hmm. those changes, like you said, it found in the data, it's not just the millennials. And I also see it with the baby boomers who are trying to live mm-hmm. longer and live healthier. So these, this is a real theme with some real investment implications for folks. So let's talk about how you build this product. Before, so there- before we do that, Jay, I, I just want to say, I'm glad you brought that up because perhaps one of the best books on investing, uh, One Up on Wall Street, written by Peter Lynch, right? There's that story in there that he followed his wife and his friend and her friends around. And that's how he stumbled onto the big legs trade that he did, LEGZ, the pantyhose. All you have to do is look around and see not only what you're buying, but what are your friends buying? What are, yeah. what are people getting at the checkout line of a, whether it's a grocery store or, or wherever you are? And you're going to see more and more of this. Get on Instagram, right? Just mm-hmm. scrolling through Instagram and you see influencers talking about, oh, this great meal plan or these supplements or look at these cleaning products that I have. Or, like, that's a big focus or, or, or the or, organic. Or, or my personal favorite, Lenore, what is it? The magic spoon. And what do I have a lot of? Deodorant. Deodorant. <laughs> no, he really does. He cleaner he thought, living deodorant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was, mm-hmm. I don't really want to know exactly what this is all about. But oh, he, stop it. Stop he's it. Recently gone through stop like it. a stop it. Renaissance. So all, it, all so if you look at deodorants. so if, if you look at native in A-T-I-V-E, and this is not a plug because I actually have it and use it. Uh, it's aluminum free, paraben free. And it comes not in a plastic um, stick container. It's actually cardboard. It's like, and it's a little, you know, old timey push up. And when you're done, it's all gone. You throw it out, and there's no harm to the environment, unlike plastic. But but e- even with that, I noticed that um, who is it? Uh, Procter and Gamble has a line of Gillette uh, shaving cream that now comes in a tube, and it's 85% plant based. The packaging. So again. Sorry to jump in this, but we, we could do this all day long. Just so many proof points. Well, to me, the biggest proof point are the number of folks who have signed up to put a deposit on Ford F-150s. The electric, oh, the electric, the electric. version. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Man, Isn't that amazing? That, that is the sign. All right, let's pivot to the index. You have, okay. you have five sub slices in the index. How did you guys come about constructing this index? Sure. So whenever we sit down and, and try to formulate a theme, we always try to do a 360 view. In, in this case, 
uh, because we're really have heavily focused on the shift in consumer spending. We're thinking we wanted a 360 view on where consumers are spending, how they're spending, what they're spending on, so on and so forth. And, and when we do that, we came up really with five subsectors. Uh, food and dining is one. Um, great example there would be Chipotle. And I know some people might be scratching their heads, but when you look at the ingredients that they use, it tells the tale of cleaner living to a, to a T, e even their adoption of, ca of uh, cauliflower rice, for example. Yeah, and they keep pushing further and further in that direction too, which is another proof point when we see companies that are already kind of here, but they keep pushing further into that. That's like, all right, we're, we are nowhere done with this story. <laughs> right, but, but there's also other companies besides Chipotle, like Alkaline Water, for example, um, or even National Beverage, which is really just um, all seltzers. Um, and I think the next one is health and beauty. Do you want to take mm -hmm. that one, Lenore? Yeah, so um, the health and beauty, that that is, aside from what goes into your body, that's more what goes on your body. Uh, most consumers are reporting right now that their wellness levels have been stagnating or even declining. Again, the pandemic kind of put some emphasis on that. So what the health and beauty is really all about is both the fitness side, the exercise and the beauty. So those products that we were talking about with Sephora has got the cleaner products. Um, Chris mentioned Cody that's really mm -hmm. shifting there into that direction. And also the global wellness market that's estimated to be about 1.5 trillion with an estimated five to 10% annual growth. And that's when you see what's going on in there, it, it's really a revolutionary fitness techs app raised a record breaking 2 billion in the post pan and or more like right, post pandemic and according to that McKinsey um, survey that we we're talking about earlier 68% prioritized health more after the pandemic than they did before and we're also seeing an interesting shift in that is becoming more holistic with exercise and health overall it's not about just okay i'm going to get a gym membership and try to go to the gym it's becoming uh, it ingrained in everyday life, you know, a lot of people buying those Pelotons <laughs> when we all got locked into our homes. Well, that's not, people aren't giving that up. Now they're going to be doing more. They're, most people are claiming they're going to be doing it more of a mix between the in-person in studios or in the gyms and doing it at home. More of the, um, you know, we're seeing pushback on people not wanting to go back into the office and wanting to have more of that hybrid work condition. And part of that is the overall wellness, more fitness, more physical activity rather than sitting in a desk all day. Right. And here, I think one of the great examples is probably Lululemon. And, and mm -hmm. I'm not, uh, I don't really wear the entire, but I know you do, Lenore. And they, they actually acquired uh, Mirror, correct? I think. Yes. They've, so what's really telling on this is how fitness is not just, okay, I go to the gym. It's becoming a very holistic thing where, so with Lulu, Lulu has provides clothes, men and women fitness clothes, but then they bought mirror, which is a mirror literally. And you work out, it is also a video. So you can work out while you see yourself doing the exercises to help get the proper form and all that. So it's, it's a massive fitness app really uh, in the form of an enormous mirror. That's really pushing them, not only the clothing, but then you're going into the activities. And they've also been experimenting a lot with in-store uh, fitness classes and all that to, to really become part of an overall wellness relationship with the consumer. Right. And then uh, the three other categories are building an infrastructure. Uh, here we're looking at the types of materials that are being used, um, whether it's like Trex, for example, which is the number one recycler of plastic bags, which means, Jay, that when I go out on my back deck, I'm standing on recycled plastic bags, which is kind of funny. But it's, it, it's phenomenal because of the maintenance and the lifetime cost. Uh, sorry, not lifetime cost, but the lifetime uh, maintenance cost is, is far lower. And again, there's that recycling component. We've also got companies like Blink Charging in here. And these are the companies that are building a key part of the infrastructure for the EV revolution. They actually build the charging stations. You know as well as I do that, you know, the battery life is only for so long and at some point you need to tank up. So we need more and more of these if we're going to have this explosion in EVs that, you know, are being talked about by, you know, not just Tesla, but GM, Ford, Chrysler and the like. Um, and then the last, yeah, regardless, uh, regardless of yeah. the EV manufacturer that you prefer, all right. of them need charging stations. 
Yeah, that, that's 100% correct. And then the last two categories are probably a little more familiar to folks. Yeah. Cleaner energy, here we're talking about solar, wind, hydro, and other alternatives, and then cleaner transportation. Again, that's where those EVs are captured. So if you're thinking Tesla, Neo, yes, but there's other companies and other modalities, e-scooters, as I said before, trucks, buses, and like that as well. The, and when you're thinking about that cleaner energy, it's, you can think about that and manage in the way when we talk about going to the grocery store. I drive around my home area in Southern California and you're seeing, I, I dare you to go out and not drive by some home that's having solar panels installed on the roof. It's everywhere. And that's another proof point. We just see more and more of this happening. All right. So today there are five sectors, just to kind of recap, food and dining, health and beauty, mm -hmm. uh, building an infrastructure, uh, cleaner energy, cleaner transportation. What yes. would cause you to add another sector or take one of these out? There would have to be enough companies that, that form this new subsector, Jay. You know, so when we try to craft them, just like we try to craft our overall uh, themes, we want them to stand the test of time. So there, there, there is some ability to, uh, I don't want to say bob and weave, but kind of uh, pivot well, and tack. Evolve. A, it's just, it's pivot, evolving. Pivot, and evolve, yes. Yeah, as, as this demand, as and, and as technology, because it's one of the things when we develop a theme, the intent is... At, is that it's going to be a, have a long lifespan and it, for it to have that it needs to be able to evolve as preferences and as technology evolves so one of the things that could really drive a new category would be new technology coming to the forefront that consumers really like that really solves a problem that we don't even today know exists okay so then how do you guys go about picking the individual stocks in the sectors for the index Sure. So we, we start with a very broad universe and we, we, we actually call through it looking for exposure to the theme. So we, we start with a few thousand companies. And then as we call through, we kind of shrink it down to about 200 or 300 or so. And that's really when we roll up our sleeves and dig into these companies using our thematic scorecard. And when we do that, we look for revenue or preferably profit exposure, depending on what's publicly reported by the company through 10Ks, 10Qs, um, uh, earnings investor call transcripts, investor presentations, okay. and the like. So, you know, or we'll we'll call their 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 uh, investor relations department if we have to. <laughs> yeah, and there there have been times where you know through asking them a series of questions, they actually will reveal a, a, a data point that we can use to put them in 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 the index um, or not. It, it really just depends. So it, it's really scoring them that matters. So that, that thematic scorecard is at the, the heart of what we do. And we use a one through five system. And when we build the index, companies have to have a, a thematic score of four or higher. That means at least 80% of their business has ex direct exposure to the theme. And, and when we build something with such high thematic purity, it, it allows us to get extremely comfortable and have a high conviction level with, with the companies and exposures. For example, other other indexes that may be looking in this area could, for example, include Ford, like you said, because Ford's coming out with all these EVs. Great. Way to go, Ford. We're sure it's going to get there at some point. But 80% of Ford's revenue is not coming from EVs right now. Mm -hmm. They're moving in that direction, which serves as a fantastic proof point for, for this. That the, you can see all of these traditional car companies that are moving in the direction of EVs. Great proof point that this is the direction they need to go in, but they're not there yet. So just because they've talked about it or maybe have a couple of products doesn't mean that they're going to make the cut for us. Right. And so it, what's exciting to us is that as this uh, investment theme proliferates and companies pivot over time, there will be companies that come into the index because, because they cross that revenue mm -hmm. or profit threshold. And some that may fall out. Yeah, exactly. Or, or they might get acquired and other companies will go public. Like we said earlier with Oatly, for example, or the honest company, but I, Jay, you know, we're data dorks. So here, here's probably the coolest thing that I can tell you, right? So when we look at the basket of uh, companies that are in the index, and we compare them to the S&P 500. Uh, between 2019 and 2022, the cleaner living basket of companies collectively are going to grow their earnings about 150%. Now, that sounds pretty fast, but it's roughly a five-bagger compared to the S&P 500 that's going to do it for all of 30%. 
So when, you know, we, we dial it back and we say that thematic investing done, done right, right? Structural change drives revenue, drives earnings, drives cash flow, right? Drives multiple expansion, driver of alpha. Clearly, that is something that is poised to happen here. Yes, a great data point. Let's wrap up with this. Uh, this is a great index. It's an interesting story. Who's licensing it where today? Uh, Amplify ETFs actually just launched an ETF product based on this strategy. The ticker symbol, which we think is pretty much the coolest ticker symbol ever, is Detox, D-T-O-X. I mean, does it get any better than that? Cleaner living, Detox? Come on, that's fantastic. Way to go, Amplify, guys. Uh, it's And this index also should be launching in Europe with Quickrow and Han ETF in the coming weeks under the very same fantastic ticker symbol, <laughs> Detox. Did I mention Detox? That is a pretty awesome ticker. <laughs> Excellent. To learn more about the U.S.-based ETF, Detox, visit AmplifyETFs.com forward slash D-T-O-X. Chris, Lenore, appreciate you guys coming on. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay.